welcome everybody here. We really appreciate you coming to Washington. Until seven months ago, I had spent all of my 20-year career in the private sector, including as a CEO and chairman of both public and private companies. So I know firsthand how the best ideas, the best practices combined with the right technologies can really transform business performance. And now that I'm in government, I strongly believe that these same powerful ideas that make companies better can improve government productivity and service quality. The President and the administration are committed to improving the efficiency and quality of government services, and we really need your help. Um, based on my thorough review of your homework, um, I am convinced that you can really help us achieve better results for the American people. After the President speaks, we will be going to breakout groups, and in those groups you will have the opportunity to work together to highlight the key lessons that government can learn from the private sector and implement. We'll then reconvene here for our closing session. It's now my honor to um, introduce someone who I have the privilege of working with every day and is the leader of our team at OMB, the Director of the Office of Management and Budget, Peter Orzag. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you all for coming here to participate in today's forum. As we close out work on the fiscal year 2011 budget, we are wrapping up a process through which we make difficult choices about where to invest the nation's resources. We're going to have a lot more to say about the budget in the weeks to come, but today we're focusing not on how much we spend, but rather on how well we spend it. Are the programs in which we are making investments delivering on what they promised? Is an initiative in one department being duplicated in another? And are we delivering services in the most efficient and effective manner possible? In evaluating these questions, the President made it very clear from the first Cabinet meeting onward that the traditional way of doing things in Washington would not be tolerated and that government must be modernized. In response, we've taken a variety of steps. We launched an ambitious effort to reform government contracting, increasing competition and bulk purchasing, and reducing no-bid contracts. Through this initiative, we're on track to save $17 billion this year and $40 billion by the end of next year. We have put forward an aggressive effort to reduce the $100 billion in improper payments made each year. That is money that the government pays out in error. And we've initiated a rigorous new process of program evaluation so that we can find out which programs work and which ones don't, and thereby streamline the successes and eliminate the failures. And in last year's budget, we put forward more than 120 cuts and reductions, totaling more than $17 billion in programs that were duplicative or ineffective. Many people in Washington thought we'd never succeed in obtaining these reductions because the programs all have powerful backers. And yet this morning, in evaluating the final results from the 2010 budget process, the Washington Times, not widely known as an administration-friendly newspaper, <laughs> concluded, and I quote, President Obama notched substantial successes in spending cuts last year. This type of effective management is not only an administration commitment, it's also an obligation that we owe to the American public. And that's why all of you are here today. The productivity gap between the public and private sectors is substantial, and the longer we allow it to persist, the larger it becomes. That's why we're committed to a new business model for government, where technology and information systems enhance efficiency, where funds are invested in initiatives that work and not on outmoded programs that don't, and where customer service does not take a back seat to bureaucracy. I know that I speak for Jeff Zients and his whole team when I say that we want to learn from you during this forum and work with you over the coming weeks and months so that we can leverage technology to close that productivity gap and give the American people a government that is more efficient and effective. 
With that, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to introduce the President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please have a seat, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thanks uh, for all of you for, uh, for being here today. I'd like to recognize uh, the Deputy cabin Cabinet Secretaries who are with us for their leadership at our agencies. And it's exciting to see uh, the leaders of some of the most innovative, cutting-edge, tech-savvy uh, tech companies in the world gathered uh, in the city where I had to fight tooth and nail just to get a Blackberry. Uh, there, there, there may be a little bit of a cultural clash here, uh, but uh, that's exactly why we want you here. Uh, you know, I really appreciate the, the time all of you have taken uh, to be in Washington for this forum. I know how busy uh, all of you are. We stand in the midst of challenging times for our economy. I don't think that's any secret. And I know that many of you have felt these challenges in your industries and in your businesses. Uh, some of you have felt them quite acutely. But I also know how you've managed to meet them and manage through them, experimenting and innovating and finding new ways to increase productivity and better serve your customers. We're here today because I believe your government should be doing exactly the same thing. When I first started campaigning for this office, I said I want to change the way that Washington works. And when I said that, I meant how it works for the American people. I meant making government more responsive to their needs. I meant getting rid of the waste and the inefficiencies that bloat our deficits and squander their hard-earned savings. I meant finally revamping the outdated technologies and information systems that undermine our efficiency and threaten our security and fail to serve their interests. And I asked all of you to this forum on government modernization today because I believe that this last objective, bringing our government into the 21st century, is critical to achieving all those other objectives. Now, I can say without any hesitation that our government employees are some of the hardest working, most dedicated, most competent people I know. Government workers get a bad rap. They are dedicated, they put in a lot of hours, and they care deeply about uh, what they do. And they desperately want to provide the very best service for the American people. But all too often, their best efforts are thwarted because the technological revolution that has transformed our society over the past two decades has yet to reach many parts of our government. Many of these folks will tell you that their kids have better technology in their backpacks and in their bedrooms than they have at the desks uh, at their work. To this day, there are still places in the federal government where reams of yellow files and manila envelopes are walked from desk to desk, or boxes of documents are shipped back and forth between offices because files aren't yet online. Believe it or not, in our patent office, now this is embarrassing, this is an institution responsible for protecting and promoting innovation, our patent office receives more than 80% of patent applications electronically then manually prints them out, scans them, and enters them into an outdated case management system. Now, this is one of the reasons why the average processing time for a patent is roughly three years. Imminently solvable, hasn't been solved yet. Even worse, too often when we've attempted to update or replace outdated technology, we end up spending exorbitant sums of money on technologies that don't meet our needs or that took so long to implement that they were obsolete before we even started using them. I, I just met with the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, Eric Shinseki, uh, who, a veteran himself, cares so deeply about making sure that veterans get their claims processed efficiently. Uh, we've been talking for 10 years about putting electronic systems in place for Veterans Affairs to reduce the backlog. And so far, it has not yet happened, not because people don't want it to happen, but partly because previous purchasing decisions have mismatched what VA has with what the Department of Defense has. They don't speak to each other. They don't merge. None of this is acceptable, particularly at a time when uh, we're experiencing such economic difficulty and so many people are struggling. We've got to get the best bang for every single dollar that the government has in its possession. 
And when Washington lags a generation behind in how we do business, that has real and serious impact on people's lives. When we waste billions of dollars, in part because our technology is out of date, that's billions of dollars we're not investing in better schools for our children, in tax relief for our small businesses, in creating jobs and funding research to spur the scientific breakthroughs and economic growth of this new century. And we know that the tools, the technology, the solutions are out there. You know because you put them in place every day. It's time we started putting them to work for the American people. If you can book dinner on open table or a flight on Southwest or United Online, then why shouldn't you be able to make an appointment at your local Social Security office the same way? If you can track your UPS package with your iPhone, then why not be able to check the status of your citizenship application on a website, rather than having to write a letter and wait for a letter back? Now, these are simple, cost-effective steps, ones which we've already taken, or at least are in the process of taking. But these are just the beginning. Going forward, I want to see solutions like this in every agency. I want to ask ourselves every day, how are we using technology to make a real difference in people's lives? How are we making it easier for small business owners to get loans so they can open their doors and expand their operations and create new jobs? How are we helping young people get student loans so they can get the education they need to pursue their dreams? How are we ensuring that the brave men and women who've served this country get their benefits as quickly and as easily as possible? How are we cutting costs and reducing our deficit so that our children and our grandchildren aren't saddled with debt. Now, improving the technology our government uses isn't about having the fanciest bells and whistles uh, on our website. It's about how we use the American people's hard-earned tax dollars to make government work better for them. And this is something I'm very serious about. Now, this is why I appointed the very first ever federal government CIO and CTO. And Vivek Kundra and uh, Anish Chopra are both coordinating our efforts and ensuring that we're embracing the best, most effective technologies possible. It's also why we introduced our IT dashboard at usaspending.gov. This is a website, which I've personally reviewed, where the American people can monitor every IT project in the federal government. If a project is over budget or behind schedule, this site tells you that, and by how much. And it provides the name, the email, and the phone number of the person responsible. To date, the site's gotten 78 million hits. We've already terminated a number of projects that weren't performing. And going forward, we won't hesitate to cut more and then take that money and reinvest it in some place that's actually going to make a difference. But here, here's the reason all of you are here. We can't do this alone. Many of you are pioneers, harnessing new technologies to build thriving businesses. Some of you have revolutionized industries. You've changed the ways that we look at the world. And if I had any doubt about how much government has to learn from all of you, then the homework assignment you all completed would have certainly convinced me otherwise. I, I think the depth and the thoughtfulness of your responses indicate that all of you spent real time uh, on, on preparing uh, for today, and I, I deeply thank you for it. And I hope all of you will continue these efforts at the forum today. I want the very best of what you've got. I want you to tell us not just what we can do to better serve the American people, but how we can do it. How we can do it without spending a whole lot of taxpayer dollars is especially what I want to hear from you. Uh, I just, and, and, and I also want to emphasize, I don't want to just hear your input today. Uh, we're going to need it in the months and years ahead as well. A lot of this stuff takes time to implement, even when it's implemented well. And that's why I've charged our uh, federal chief performance offer uh, Jeff Zients, who you already heard from, to work with Vivek and Anish, and all of you to make sure the changes we make have a lasting impact. And we'll need each of you to keep stepping up and sharing your insights and your ideas and your expertise. We're going to need you to help us build the kind of government that the American people expect and the kind of government that they deserve. And that's one that spends their money wisely, serves their interests well, and is fully worthy of their trust and their respect. So that's the purpose of today's forum. That's the ongoing mission of this administration. Uh, and I very much look forward to hearing uh, what you have to offer us. Thank you very much for being here, everybody. All right.